Today we're going to be talking about how you can use estimation to help you define sums or differences. I have two tips for you. The first tip is for you to look for words like about or estimate or approximately. These are clues that you don't want an exact answer, but that you're going to be rounding instead. My second clue for you is, for you is to round first. You want to add, round all the numbers you're adding or subtracting first and then do that operation second. It doesn't do you any good to solve the problem and then just round the answer. You want to check your work by finding easier numbers that are already rounded and doing the adding and subtracting on those first. Let's practice a couple problems together. There are 234 pop cans and 178 glass bottles at the recycling center. About how many recyclables are present? Well, my first tip says to pay attention for words like round, or about, estimate, or approximately. I noticed right away that I have the word about. That lets you know that you're rounding. Then I need to be able to figure out what this problem is asking me to do when I round those two numbers. So, there are 234 pop cans and 178 glass bottles. I want to know how there are, how many there are all together, or how many are present. If I'm visualizing that, that's letting me know that there's 234 in one pile, and 178 in the other pile, and my total would be when I put the two together. I want to round first and then do the operation. I figured out since I have two parts, I'm going to be adding in this case. Well, I know that 234 is awfully close to 200, if I'm rounding to the nearest 100. I know that 178 is also close to 200, if I'm rounding to the nearest 100. That means there's going to be about 400 items present in the recycling center. Now, I rounded a lot here. I dropped 34, and on this one, I picked up 22. If you want to be more exact, you can round to the nearest 10. In that case, 234 would round to 230, and 178 would round to 180. Now these answers are going to be more exact, but they're also going to be more challenging for you to add in your head. So do what's comfortable, or pay close attention to what the problem says to do. In this case, if you were to add them all together, you would end up with 410. Notice it's not a huge difference from my original answer, but there is a slight difference. So notice I paid attention to the word about, I rounded first, and then I did the operation of adding. Let's try another one. Notice my same clues, look for those keywords, round first, and then do the operation. Our lunch ladies made 211 chicken patties. So far, 173 have been eaten. How many are still left? So. I notice that I have about as a keyword, which lets me know I'm going to be doing rounding. I'm going to visualize this problem so I know which operation to choose. I know that in total there was 211 chicken patties. I know that most of the chicken patties have been eaten. 173, part of them, have been eaten. Helps me sometimes if I put an X through, that lets me know that this is what's gone. Since I know a total and a part, I know that I'm going to be subtracting. Now I just need to round. 211 is close to 200. 173 is close to 200. Now here comes the problem with rounding to the nearest hundred. 200 minus 200 means there's approximately no chicken patties left. Well, that doesn't make sense. I know there's chicken patties left. Let's try rounding to the nearest 10. 211 is about 210. 173 is close to 170. If I count up by tens from 170, I have 180, 190, 200, 210, I'd end up with 40 more chicken patties I need. That makes a lot more sense. So notice, I started with the word about, which let me know I wanted to do rounding. I rounded first, trying first hundreds, and then down to tens, and only after I'd done my rounding did I worry about my operation. Here's another problem. I started with a $50 bill when shopping this weekend. I spent $27.14 on a dress. How much money should I get back? Step number one, look for the words about, estimate, or approximately. Well, as I look through this problem, I don't see those words. If you don't see those words, that means you are not estimating a difference. You need an exact answer here, in which case you do not need to round. You just need to add or subtract the numbers. We get to skip this problem because it's not an estimating problem. 
This last problem I want you to try on, along with me. Get out a whiteboard so you can follow along and do the rounding yourself. The steps, remember, still look for those keywords. And remember, after you've found those keywords and know what you're doing in the problem, you round first and then do the operation second. Notice this is the same problem with one small difference. I started with a $50 bill when shopping this weekend. I spent $27.14 on a dress. About how much money should I have gotten back? What's the key difference? If you recognize the difference is the fact that I now have the word about, you'd be absolutely correct. I know one word doesn't seem like a big difference, but it's huge in this case. About lets us know that we're rounding. If I want to visualize this problem, I know that I started with a total of 50. I know that out of that 50, I've spent part of it. This is where that $27.14 would be. And if it helps, you can cross it off because this is the amount of money that's gone. I'm trying to find the amount of money that I still have. Since I have a total and I've spent or lost or taken away some, I know I'm subtracting. So now I'm ready to do my rounding. 50 is great. I don't have to do any rounding. It's a rounded for it, already rounded for me. Now I need to round $27.14 to something that makes sense and I can add in my head or subtract in my head. In this case, I could take it to $27, but I know I personally don't feel very strongly about being able to do 50 minus 27 in my head, so I might round to something a little bit easier. I know that $27.14 is awfully close to $30. It is not close to $20, it's much closer to 30, so when I'm rounding to 10s, I would say $30. I can do 50 minus 30 very easily in my head. I know that 5 tens minus 3 tens leaves me with 2 tens, which is an answer of 20. So, when you're estimating sums or differences, you want to look for those keywords to know, am I rounding or do I need exact? After you figure that out, you want to visualize your problem and then round first and do the operation second. Start with the rounded numbers whether it's rounding to the nearest dollar, to the nearest 10, or to the nearest 100, and then do the operation with those easier numbers that you can do in your head. Go ahead and move on to your next activity in the center.